Hey guys, it's your girl Cherish from The Motley News. Uh, today I wanted to talk to you about misappropriation and if the black community in America is actually guilty of it. I'm doing this video in response to an article that I read um, by a young woman named Sephora Jean. Uh, she writes for, she's a freelance writer and I found this article on the blog Those People. The name of the article, it's very interesting, it's called Black America, Please Stop Appropriating African Clothing and Tribal Marks. And the subtitle is, Yes, That Means Everyone at Afropunk Too. Um, so what she's talking about, uh, Afropunk was a festival in Brooklyn not too long ago where a lot of people, mostly blacks, kind of converged together to share um, common identity, listen to awesome music, and dress really, I think, really cool. I saw all the photographs and I thought the style was amazing. Uh, but this particular writer, Sephora Jean, is saying, uh, hold up. The tribal markings that I've seen a lot of you wearing and, you know, the kenti cloth and the head wraps and all of that, um, maybe calm down on that because I feel like you might be stealing something from us without really educating yourselves as to where it came from. And I think it's a really interesting argument, and I think this is a point of view that we definitely need to hear about, because when it comes to Africa, we're not all on the same page. It's, it is not a country. It is a continent full of many countries, many different tribes within that country, and the borders have only been drawn up by European colonialists. So let's be clear about that. <laughs> Africa is not a monolith. So she's saying that the fashion that we are appropriating might not be such a good idea because we might be as guilty as white people with dreadlocks. And yeah, we've all complained about white people and dreadlocks. <laughs> um, uh, could we possibly be guilty of misappropriation ourselves? I don't know. That's making me ask a lot more questions than I feel have been answered. Uh, for one thing, yeah, she is right. We all need education when it comes to other people's cultures before we pick and choose every little thing that we want to do. Um, you know, everything that we want to take from them. You know, if you get Mahendi uh, henna tattoos, which come from India and North Africa, you should be aware of why those are used and who does them and for what purpose. Always be aware of that. Remember when Gwen Stefani in the 90s was wearing a lot of uh, bendy jewels on her forehead? Again, like uh, young Indian women would. I'm not entirely sure she asked herself, where does this thing come from? And what is the custom of wearing it? I don't know if she did, but I'm guessing that she saw that it was really cute and that she wanted to add it to her repertoire. So yeah, we need better education. But to say that blacks are mis misappropriating um, African culture, I don't know, it might be a little too extreme. If we think about um, our own African American history, it's no secret that we were wrenched from our former continent, our homeland, and brought to various places throughout um, uh, the Caribbean um, and the United States. I mean, you know, we are African to some extent. Sure, there's been a lot of mixing um, in the hundreds of years that have followed, but, you know, at the heart of us, we are African Americans in this country who are still alienated and still, you know, isolated against a white supremacy. So what else do we have? 
you know, uh, we've spent years, decades, hundreds of years trying to assimilate into a culture that doesn't necessarily want us. We've changed the way we talk, we've changed the way we dress, we've changed um, all physical appearances to pass to be something that we um, fundamentally are not. So to say that uh, reclaiming some little bit lost piece of our identity is reckless stealing, um, she didn't say that, I'm saying it. I don't know. Again, I think it might be a little extreme. Think about the black move, the black power movement of the late um, 60s, early 70s, you know, the, t the country was going through a very tumultuous time. Civil rights movement was, you know, in full swing. Um, people were finally fed up with the treatment um, from white America. And um, they were pulling a lot of philosophy from black existentialists um, abroad in Europe and in Africa. One particular writer, Franz Fanon, is a he was a black philosopher from Martinique, which um, was colonized by the French. He wrote uh, about liberation and, you know, coming up against oppression, colonial oppression. And I'm going to read you something that I wrote a long time ago for a class, um, a quote from him saying that, you know, Franz Fanon wanted blacks to nurture their own unique sense of history and use it as a base for an oppositional culture from whence would emerge when the time was right, an army bloody, an army of bloody but glorious re uh, liberation, which, you know, this might have been okay for Algerians who were fighting the oppression of France at the time, which would have been Franz Fanon's chief audience, but most African Americans kind of saw a bloody revolution as suicide, and they took his message and kind of turned it. And I think what sprang forth was uh, a Black is Beautiful movement, which was attempting to embrace African roots. And while some of the, you know, some people saw this as a superficial move that only commodified and exploited this um, mythical and homogenized Africa, you know, people like Angela Davis argued that these were the changes in appearance that were maybe just the first steps in resisting white supremacy. And if a black person felt more secure and beautiful in their blackness, by wearing an afro or kenti cloth or daishiki, you know, maybe that would be enough. That should be enough. Something like that. So, um, if we fast forward to now, um, we are not in the bloody uh, civil rights movement anymore. Or are we? I mean, every time you wake up, you turn on the news, you find out that a young black person has been brutalized on the streets by um, law authorities or dies in a prison cell or a jail cell. You know, these are the kind of things that we're waking up to. And this is only kind of a reminder of where we were when we did our best to assimilate into white culture. And now maybe this is the time that we kind of reclaim some blackness that comes from way, way, way back. Um, we'll never be African, and that time is gone. It's lost to us. And even people who have been colonized, you know, they'll never get back to pre-colonization. That time is lost to them. But there are some customs that we feel like, you know, if I put this on, if I adorn myself in this, this will make me feel like my ancestry and heritage haven't been violently ripped away from us. So, again, I mean, obviously we, um, we need to be better educated 
as to what is going on in Africa and where these things come from. I totally believe in that because, you know, I'm an English teacher and I teach uh, freshman composition. And when I talk to students about things that are happening abroad, they have, you know, blank faces all the time and they have no idea what Africa really is. Um, they just think that it looks like the savannah, <laughs> which it, that's not the case. Um, when students talk about Africa, they say, you know, some place in Africa does X, Y, and Z. And I always ask them, well, which country are you talking about? And they never know. So somewhere along the line, Americans have definitely failed students, um, particularly black students. Um, and educating them about what's going on first around the world and more specifically, you know, on the great continent of Africa. We just don't know. And, um, you know, some of us will not know until we've gone to college and start reading post-colonial literature. And... I don't want to say that it's too late, but um, by then we've probably made some mistakes along the way, like wearing tribal markings at Afropunk. So I ask that you forgive um, us because we are working on it. <laughs> We're not perfect, but I, I do believe that Black Americans do not mean it maliciously. Um, they are just trying to search for something that has been lost, okay? Uh, anyway, I will include the link to that article in the description box. It's very good to read. Um, she's a great writer. It's just that I had some, some points that I wanted to make as well. Um, until next time, I will see you guys later. Please hit us up with uh, comments, feedback, questions, all that stuff. Okay. Bye.